Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about biomechanics of hand complex. As we know, complex means many joints and many bones. In hand complex, there are around 19 bones and 19 joints, excluding distal row of carpal bones. As we can see now, the hand complex consists of CMC joints, MCP joints, PIP joints, and DIP joints. We all know CMC is carpometacarpal joints which is connected by distal row of carpals and metacarpals. Distal row of carpal means trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hemate from lateral to medial aspect. Then MCP joints. There are around 5 MCP joints. We all know from the carpals, thumb, first MCP, then second MCP, third MCP, fourth MCP and fifth MCP. Then PIP joints with only one IP joint is there in thumb and rest all the PIP joints are of your all four fingers then four DIP joints okay <clears throat> now structure of fingers structure of fingers we all know that each and every finger is distinctive with respect to its shape and size and its function. So right now we will be talking about the fingers that means index finger, middle finger, ring finger and little finger. So now uh, we will be talking about CMC joint but, but before moving to the CMC joint I would just let you know what is carpal arch and why is it important for us? We all know that distal row of carpal joints and your other second, third, fourth and fifth metacarpals will make a CMC joint that is known as carpometacarpal joint. So these distal row of carpals will be made of trapezoid, trapezium, capitate and hemate and it will be converted into a carpal arch with the help of some ligaments that is carpal ligament that is transverse carpal ligament or TCL or also known as flexor retinaculum and intercarpal ligaments. As you can see over here the TCL is the portion of flexor retinaculum you can see in this diagram this flexor retinaculum is attached medially from pisiform and hemate bone and laterally from scaphoid and trapezium that means both of the carpals take care that means all four all eight and all two rows Now look at the CMC joints of 2nd to the 5th digits. This is very important joints and you can see their connection with the distal row of carpals. You can see the 2nd metacarpal joint is connected with 3 bones that is your trapezium, trapezoid and capitate. Trapezium, trapezoid and capitate. Whereas your third one is just in the connection with capitate and fourth and fifth fourth is connected with the capitate and hemate and fifth is connected with the hemate only all cmc ligaments are supported from dorsal to the volar aspects and it is included with some other ligaments which are transverse ligaments which are more stronger and longitudinal ligaments which are weaker. We will be discussing about it later. I will be also sharing you with all, with all these details with my PPT but before that we will be moving to some of the types of the joints and first CMC like second to the four CMC joints are the plain synovial joint which has only one degree of freedom that means flexion and extension whereas fifth CMC is saddle joint it has more degree of freedoms than 
other CMC joints. It works very much similar to the first CMC joint like flexion extension, abduction reduction and some opposition which is a composition of rotation, flexion, extension, abduction and extension. Now next we will be moving to the MCP joints of fingers. Second to the fifth MCP are all composed of convex metacarpal heads and concave phalanx. That means these are all condylite type of joints which has two degree of freedom. Two degree of freedom means it has two movements flexion extension and abduction reduction and I have also shared the range of motion of these joints and always remember that where the phalanx attached is known as head the carpals and the metacarpals attachment is known as base and rest of the part is known as the body of the metacarpal bone. Now IP joints of the finger. There are two joints PIP and DIP that means proximal interphalangeal joints and dorsal interphalangeal joints of the fingers. These are the true synovial joints. It has only one degree of freedom that means the movements are flexion and extension. Each has one joint capsule, volar plate and two collateral ligaments. It also has dorsal plate. We will be discussing later. The range of motion of the PIP and DIP is a slight different. The range of motion of PIP is 110 to 135 degree whereas DIP is 80 to 90 degree. As we will move further, what are the volar and collateral ligaments? Volar plates, simple you can see in this diagram. These are the palmar plates. Okay. And over there, you can see these are the ligaments collateral ligaments okay collateral ligaments means which will be in the lateral side will be known as lateral collateral ligament medial side will be medial collateral ligaments and a rounded ligament also known as annular ligament like we have seen over the radius and ulna and what is the function of these ligaments simple the volar ligament or volar plate at the mcp joint is a unique structure that increases joint congruity similarly these plates also is over the pip and dip joints these are composed of fibrocartilage and is firm attachment with proximal phalanx okay now the collateral ligaments collateral ligaments of the mcp joints are slack in extension and taut in flexion that means whenever you are doing this thing this movement okay you are not able to abduct you are not able to abduct when it is in full flexion but when it is in full extension the mcp you can do abduction but when it is in flexion you cannot do abduct okay then rest we will be talking about thumb and first CMC, first MCP in our next lecture. Thank you.